Adosa Brata Baha Ayada Bada 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 Babosaya Alisi Bibi Adosa Baya The lion is roaring now Imalo Sibi Atabaya Oh thank you Holy Spirit Thank you Holy Spirit Atuni Bi Atuni Misaya in the name of the Lord Jesus. Uh, oh, if you are witness that there's a lion that has been activated on your case and your situation, I want you to shout and roar with that lion. In the name of the Lord Jesus, give God a shout of praise. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The atmosphere is well set. And we want to acknowledge the presence of the man of God, Apostle David. Let's appreciate him. <laughs> As my brother. Hallelujah. And, and you know, Minister Jometu also came in. Let's appreciate him. Wonderful. Hallelujah. And tonight is a night of encounter. Hallelujah. You want to, you want to appreciate the Lord and activate every senses in your spirit. To pick every blessing here. Some of you travel from far. Some of you came to sleep over. Some of you have come from miles away. And it's because of something. Is there not a cause? Is there not a cause? That Friday night like this you are here. Why? There is a cause. And you don't want to live here the same way you came. Hallelujah. You want to receive Minister Bumi to take over and be a blessing to her. Put your hands together and let's receive the woman of God. Oh, oh, keep clapping, keep clapping, keep clapping, keep clapping. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, Dallas, you are too cold for my liking tonight. Somebody say, yeah. Ah, Dallas people, this is not how we're going to do it. start a conference but it seems we're a little cold tonight are you cold are you sure so should we praise or we should worship both hallelujah before we go ahead I want to honor the man of God Apostle David come on someone celebrate the grace that has brought us together here tonight thank you so much sir I want to honor all the men and women of God the the music ministers, Minister Joe Metal, Minister David, God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The song says, you've got times and seasons in your hands. Hallelujah. You call for the light out of darkness. Come on, sing it. You don't need a man. To be the God you are, you have chosen, you have chosen to call, to call me your own. You are God, you are God from beginning, from beginning to the end. There's no place, there's no place for us. Come on, if you know it, let them hear your voice you tonight. Are God.
lift those hands all over this place. You are Yahweh. Hey, you are Yahweh. I say that.
begin to sing. I will sing, I will sing, I will sing, I will sing. I will sing, yes. I will sing. of the goodness yes. of God. I will sing. I will sing. Come on, let him hear you. Of the goodness I will sing. of God. Just shout Jesus, come on. Just tell him be magnified. Be magnified. Mandele Bosananabaya. Come on, just talk to him. Just talk to him. Tell him God be magnified. I magnify you tonight. In our praise, show yourself strong here today. Let your name be praised in our midst. Be magnified in our everybody say, Be magnified. Come on.
what it means for God to give you breath. I was in Pittsburgh last week and I saw a man, a father figure to me, begging for life. Some people are saying, as long as. Ah. May you always have good health. Ah, somebody cannot stay will say amen. I said, may you always have good health. Now, I want somebody to do something radical. What you think people will laugh at. But you know you are praying God according to the measure that he deserves. Are you ready? I love that sister back there. Are you ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah.
Lift those hands all over this place. Oh, it's thick in here. Lift it high. Ayala masia na na ne. Oriya na masia la ba ne. I hear a cry coming from somebody. Sike na ni ole masia. Osha. For words, trying to describe Elohim, Eliyah, Alishele, we, your greatness is all I can see. There is nothing. You cannot do There's no mountain You cannot move Once you have said it Then you will do it Once you have said it Then you will do it going to address somebody's situation tonight. Once he said it, then he will. Once you have said it, then you will do it. You have a track record of keeping your word and your Somebody say, all oh, over oh, 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 yeah. oh, you are my seal. Oh, 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 you are my seal. Shall be one, no for
feet, God bless you. Oh my Jesus. Something is happening in the atmosphere. Malu Sibikataya. Woman of God, God bless you so much. You know, we want to activate a certain weapon. And it's one of the weapons that the enemy is very afraid of. And that is the weapon of testimonies. Hear me. Music or worship is one of the weapons. The other day, God spoke through the prophet to Jehovah. He said, let the men of war go back and let the men with instruments come forward and let them praise God. And the Bible said that God descended and caused confusion and the men began to kill themselves. The weapon of worship. And the Bible also says in in Revelation in chapter number 12, the verse number 11, he said, and they overcame him by the word, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not fear their life even unto death. Hear me. The, the, another weapon that we want to activate in the next few minutes before we continue with the worship is the weapon of testimony. When you give a testimony, what you're doing is that you are showing the, the greatness of God over any circumstance in your life. You are exalting God above every situation in your life. And you are making God, you know, know that indeed he is with you. Hallelujah. And what you do to other believers is that you also let them know that if God has done it for you, he can do it for them. Are you with me? So what, what are we going to do? Whatever testimony is going to come. You want to also know that if God has done it for this sister, this brother, then it means that God is in the atmosphere. Are you with me? Oh, are you here? If you are here, say hallelujah. So when the testimonies are coming, I want you to connect to the testimonies and personalize it as you, as you hear them. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you. We've got about... Um, three people that are going to give us testimonies real quick and then I want to invite um, the first person Befri, Befri if you are here can we have you? Put your hands together put your hands together, let's receive her oh put your hands together, put your hands together and then um, Susan can also follow, I want to have all the three of you here so that um, we can do it together and then Stella Stella if the three of you are here, can we all be here together? God bless you. God bless you. All right. Yes. Please come this way. Thank you. Praise the Lord. My name is Befri. I stand here healed. In 2021, I was diagnosed of cancer, multiple myeloma, and that was stage four. That was January. And when I went to the doctor, the oncologist told me, it's a very delicate type of cancer. Why? Because it, it's, there's no pain. And I was actually not in pain. And the reason I went to hospital is because I had a, a nearly death accident. I was hit from the rear by the 18 or 20 wheeler trucks. So that is what took me to hospital. And in the process of um, MRI and scans, they noticed a little swelling, a very tiny swelling that I was hesitant for a follow-up. I told the doctors, I don't need that follow-up. It's not hurting, so just let it be. And they said, no, what God did not put in you should not be in you. And I said, okay. So they went ahead and did the biopsy, did what they know how to do well, and that was it. And when they told me the first person I called was Papa, I told him, can you hear what they have said? He told me, what did they say? I told him, they said that I have cancer. He told me, no, my daughter, let's trust God for a miracle. I believed his word. Second Chronicles says, believe the word of the prophet and believe in his word, and... Thank you. Yes. So I believed his word. But again, there's this bad spirit that keeps telling you, are you sure? They said it's stage four. 
stage four, there's no healing in stage four. And actually the doctors were telling me it's all over me, you know. Every part where there's bone marrow and your bone marrow is everywhere, it's all over. So they said they could not really say it's my back, it's my hand, it's whatever. They said it all over. All right. So I started off chemotherapy, 2021, I went and then they said now, it's a little better, so you need to go into transplant. I called Papa again. Hear what they're saying, transplant. He said, well, if Jesus himself did not stop him, if Father God himself did not stop his son from going to the cross, if this is what he chose for you, my daughter, you go through it. But just know I'm backing you up. So I held on to that word. Papa is backing me up. And for sure, he did. That is when he was coming for Grace Encounter Dallas in 2021, the very first time. And I was in hospital battling for my life through transplant. It's not a procedure that you'd want any of your enemies to go through. It's just horrible. I don't even know how to explain it. But I would, every morning I would get a text from my daddy here. He says, daughter, I am with you. I couldn't even talk, but he kept on encouraging me. And with that, I held on to that word. And at some point when he was in Seattle in 2021, coming into Dallas, he said, you know what? I just feel I need to come and lay hands on you. And when I was going into that transplant, let me back up a little bit. When I was going to that transplant, the doctors were saying it's 50-50. We really cannot tell. Why? Because it's, it's too bad. It's too bad. And the doctors, when the doctors tell you too bad, and this is Mayo Hospital, which is very well known for cancer. And they said it's really too bad. This, we are just trying this one, but there is no guarantee that you will get well. Well, I believed... I, Something kept on telling me, the Holy Spirit kept on telling me, your daddy said you will be well. And I know when Papa tells you he's praying, he is praying. He just doesn't say what, and then he sits back and says, well, I have other things in the ministry. As small as I am in the ministry, but he would think about me. Even when I'm not thinking about him, he would think about me and send me a text and send me, I'm, I'm praying, I'm praying. Well, transplant went. And when Papa was coming, he actually detoured from Seattle to, from Seattle, he detoured to Florida where I live to come and lay hands on me. And remember that was during COVID. So I wasn't allowed to see anybody. I wasn't allowed to meet anybody, but I had to meet my daddy. And he laid hands on me and he said, it shall be well. Come 2022. When I went, that was like around October, November, December. So when I went into the biopsy to try to, to see how far, how the transplant had gone, it took three weeks before I got the results. And it worried me. I was worried. They kept on telling, I called the doctor. I sent a message on the portal. They tell me, oh, the doctor is reviewing your results and they will get back to you. Finally, the doctor called me and he told me, um, I have been an oncologist for the last 25 years. I've never seen this. Nobody comes out of transplant and goes into remission. But you have done it. So whatever you're doing. So he said, whatever you are doing, keep doing it. But he said, you know what? Let's give it a year. This thing, it relapses. Stage four cannot go. It will relapse. And I said, fire. My daddy says, catch fire. So in me, I said, those words catch fire. They're not mine. It's not my portion. Yes, come 2022, December, I go in, they say, now it's one year. Let's try it again. So they do it and they say, you know what? This is complete remission. Glory There's to God. No Glory doubt. to God. Glory to God. So I stand here fully healed. So whatever you are going glory, through, glory, is a glory, glory, is a glory, 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 glory
God bless you. God bless you. You know what? If you are also going through any situation, sickness, whatever, connect to this testimony. Connect to this altar. Connect to this grace. Oh, come on, put your hands together. Let's celebrate the Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus, it is permanently done. Are you Susan or Stella? You are Stella. Please come. Let's put our hands together for Stella. She's just going to share with us what the Lord has done for her. Please come in the middle. Thank you. Um, let us praise the Lord for his good, for his mercy, and yours forever. Um, my name is Stella Annan. I have traveled all the way from Clementine, New Jersey, to be with you tonight. Um, I have been through a series of denial and delays in my life. And the last grace encounter, um, Apostle David held my bare feet and on the ground and said, For where your feet have trodden, there you will dwell. And it has come to pass. For 32 years, I've been near syndrome for 32 years and within this one year it came to pass so I thank the Lord I am so excited no so I thank the Lord and I'm so excited to have him as a voice that speaks over my life everything is prospering everything is going on so glory we thank to God the Lord and we praise him amen amen Hallelujah. You know, she wasn't putting the mic to her mouth enough. So some of you didn't hear. You know, 32 years of being in the wilderness, the Lord brought her home. Those of you who understand, you understand it. Hallelujah. It's the doing of the Lord. Hallelujah. I said it's the doing of the Lord. I pray that the Lord will settle you this year. As you sit here under this grace, in the name of Jesus. If you shouted an amen, you are the one who is receiving it. No, if you shouted an amen, you are receiving it. The Lord is settling you this year in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Our sister Stella, Susan. Okay. <laughs> She's here to give us. Let's put our hands together. Please come in the middle because of the cameras. years my life has changed in in very many ways the main testimony that I want to say right now is uh, it's a two part testimony on marriage for um, this year May I'll be married for 12 years but we we met we got married before we knew each other and then after doing that, then I got to know Christ. And I wanted to do it the right way. But when you do things in the worldly way, you receive the worldly anointing. And for a long time, that is what I reaped. That is what I received in my marriage. Anytime Apostle saw me calling, he knew what it was all about. The last time Apostle came here two years ago, when we had a one-on-one -on -one session with him, he started smiling because he already knew what my prayer request was. Apostle, my marriage. Apostle, my marriage. But um, maybe four years before, Two years before Apostle came, which is four years, one time I called him and I said, Apostle, I am tired. I am done. I cannot go on. And you know, sometimes when you talk to Apostle, you think he's not listening. Because he will respond so quietly. And he said, my daughter, don't worry. It is well. He will be back. Apostle, I did not believe. 
can be honest and just say at that point, you know when you're walking in fire and somebody said you need to step out. That is what you shall learn. Last year, uh, when Apostle came here uh, for, for Grace Encounter, I came, we prayed, he gave me direction, and um, that was in, in July when you were here. Yeah, when, when, you, when you were in Jala, Dallas, I believe it was in, in summer two years ago. In February last year, my husband himself called me on Valentine's Day. And he said, babe, let's do this thing right. You know, a lot of times we pray, but when our prayers are answered, you're like, hold up. What are you trying to say? He wanted us to wed last year, May. I'm the one who said, no, no, no. Are you sure? So I am happy and pleased to say, I am wedding in May for my 12th year anniversary. This year, I will be 50 years old. Do not let that age hinder you. Do not let age. Pray. If it is what you want, pray. God is a faithful God. God is faithful. My second part of this test testimony, my mother has six girls and one boy fine-looking family, if I can say so myself. We have never had a wedding in my family. Never. Tomorrow I'm leaving for Australia for my sister's wedding. In March, in May, my wedding. Do not give up. Continue to pray. Do not give up. If this this happened to me. It is not something I would, you know, but I am here because I want to encourage somebody. Everybody here wants to just, you feel like they belong. Yes, you belong to God, but you want like a You feel like, you know, this is my person. And a lot of times people, I used to hear people say, oh, my sister, this is my best friend. And I used to look at them like they were crazy because I didn't see how that was possible. I want to tell you that I run home to my best friend now. I run home to my best friend. And he runs home to me. That is a testimony that I thought I would never have. So continue praying. Continue believing. Do not give up. Do not lose hope. I'm a living testimony to that. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. You know, you know what? When you were saying, I said, the negative cycle over somebody's life is broken. I said, that negative cycle is broken. You are becoming a pathfinder and a trailblazer. Oh, your amen is too weak for me. <laughs> I said, God is cutting a niche for you and you are going to be the first in that line. Oh, I said somebody is setting a new record. And after you, that record will be the easiest in the family. Hallelujah. You know, uh, maybe I hear you couldn't give your name ahead of time. But there is this testimony you want to give. I just want to give chance to maybe one or two people real quick. And then we invite uh, Minister Joe Metal to bless us. If you are here, you have a testimony. You've always wished... That when Apostle is online, you could get the chance to testify. But you, 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 you never had the chance. Today, I want to invite you. If you are here like that, just give me a wave wherever you are. You want to give a testimony? I want to allow you. I want to allow you. I want to pick a random one. Can, 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 can I see your hand? You want to give a testimony? Hallelujah. 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 You know, there are people, they are always, you know, shy of standing in front of people to speak. 
but today maybe somebody can be a lawyer for you yes i see i see a mama coming let's put our hands together for her let's put our hands together for her yes can you come up here yes glory to god so when you get here you you, you tell us your name and let everybody know all right oh put your hands together as she comes everyone. I'm honored to be here. Glory to God. I'm thankful to be in all of your presence. This was a necessary event for me. I'll share with you how good God is that he knows what we need before we even know. I am standing here and I'm standing in the gap for my 17 year old nephew. I need everybody in here to bombard the heavens for his breakthrough, for his release, that God will release him from any and all oppression, and that there will be a greater testimony than this one that I am giving tonight, because God is good. So on Wednesday, I was on Instagram, and I sent a message to Mr. Joe Meadow. I lived in Dallas, in Arlington, for over 30 years, and I moved to Ghana to start a NGO there and I was going through as they say they dealt with me <laughs> they dealt with me I had so much to learn and I had no idea and one evening I was crying out to the Lord I went up to the rooftop I live in Kokum Limley in an area of Accra and I went up to the rooftop and I cried out to the Lord and he heard me and one of the songs that ministered to me was from this minister right here glory be to God. So in the midst of everything that my family is going through, I wanted to share this song with them, but a lot of them, the dialect, and there were so many things that they just didn't understand. And so I reached out to him and I asked him, is there an English version of this song? I really want to share this song with my family. And he responded. And I just happened to look at his story today and he said he was in Dallas rehearsing. I said, oh God, how great you are. <laughs> From Ghana to Dallas, I've been in Ghana and I've never seen him perform. And, and I know the, the way that God moves is so beyond me, is so beyond me. So my, my niece is here with me tonight and we are so grateful for this experience. We so, we're so grateful to be surrounded by the glory of the Lord. We felt that as soon as we came into the door, there was a testimony waiting to greet us as soon as we walked in. The glory of the Lord, the glory of the Lord. We stand, we stand, and we ask you to please join us in prayer for Anthony. Anthony McDowell, we lift him up. There will be a greater testimony than this. God is good. God bless you. Put your hands together for the Lord. Amen. And we know, um, you know, that the secret of giving testimony that many people don't know. The more you give testimonies, the more you get testimonies. So testimony is like a key. So what our sister just did is that she has, re he, she has made use of the key that is going to unlock another testimony, which is going to be greater. Hallelujah. God mightily bless you. And are you, are you ready to receive the, the man of God? You know, I believe that this conference is designed specifically for somebody's turnaround. That is what I believe. And I want you to keep on expecting. Keep hope alive. Don't give up. Because God is going to come through for you. Church, help me. Let's invite Minister Joe Metal. Put your hands together for him. Put your hands together and receive him. God bless you, man of God. Hallelujah. Somebody, can you do it better unto Jesus tonight? Oh, come on. Clap and celebrate Jesus in this place tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I want to say a big thank you to Apostle for for the opportunity that me to be here tonight. Um, you have no idea. This is actually our third um, 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 stop. 
because we, we, we started in Kenya and then we went to Ghana and then we happened to be here in Dallas. I mean, one of, one of our, our guests says, he sent you a message. He said, eh, now that we are going to America, we've left him in Ghana. <laughs> but I, I, don't take, I don't take this opportunity for granted. Thank you so much, Apostle, for this um, honor done. Thank you. Thank you. And can you, can you just say a big ble- God bless you to Apostle? He's an amazing person. Amen. Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Matchless love and beauty and this voice. For nothing in this world has satisfied. Oh, God. Because Jesus showed the cup that will run dry. Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Yes. Oh, God. Matchless love and beauty and this words. Hallelujah, hallelujah. For nothing in this world can satisfy. We've tried it and know. Oh, Jesus, you're the cup that will run dry. So, Jesus, you're the cup that will never run dry. Say, Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. We have come to draw from him tonight. Jesus, you are the cup. Say, Jesus, you're the cup. I have in this in the fact that I know who holds tomorrow. 
so if my future is in the hands of that one that holds tomorrow then I have nothing to worry about because he has good thoughts about me his plans towards me are good and not evil if I don't know what you are going through tonight but put that trust in him he lifts your hands say it again you are the holder of my future say it. holder of my future I want you to proclaim these words come on holder of my future days to come say holder of my future oh tomorrow will be better than yesterday
So awesome God How great thou art Can you just tell him tonight Just softly say You are God Almighty Are your me And that's what he's doing tonight Standing on Oh Of your holy Somebody bow and worship Say Lord we bow and one for you deserve the glory ah, and the honor come on come on come on tonight lord we lift our hands in worship ah, as we bless you you deserve the glory say you deserve the just want to open your mouth and give him glory in this place tonight he's a faithful father awesome is your name awesome is your name we bless your name tonight you do mighty things and you do glorious things you are a faithful God oh, awesome is your name so how can I express my gratitude for all the many things you've done for me. <laughs> hey, hey. Words are not enough to say thank you. How many grateful people in the house tonight? Somebody say, Lord, you are your
based on the life they live. But there's one word, even no matter how holy a human being is, you cannot use to describe them. Come on, come on. It's like a word that is reserved only for him. He yes. says, while men are exclaimed and, and, and shocked about situations and say, wow. When the angels go around the throne, each time they come around, it's that same exclamation that makes them say holy. Come on, come on. The, the holiness, even though they, they go around the throne each time, the holiness of God still amazes them. So they come and say, Kadosh, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. He alone is worthy. Holy, holy, holy you are, Lord God Almighty, and early in the morning I saw so and enthroned in this atmosphere we thank you and we bless your holy name you are God in three persons can I, can I just say this last thing before I say only you
Father, oh, we exalt you tonight. There is nothing you cannot do. There's no mountain you cannot I just want us to confess these words. There is nothing you cannot do. There's a mountain you cannot move. Say, there's no mountain you cannot move. I trust in you, say, and I trust in you. Somebody say, you are my. Voice me say, there is nothing you cannot do. There's a mountain you cannot move. There's no mountain you cannot move. So I trust in you, say, and I trust in you. So you are my God. You There is nothing you cannot do. Thank you, Holy Spirit. There's no mountain you cannot move. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So I trust you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Still in the mood of the Spirit. You want to take your seat and stay in the mood of prayer. Let your heart worship. 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 Thank you, Holy Spirit. In 
Jesus mighty name amen let's appreciate the Holy Spirit and the minister of God put your hands together for the Lord hallelujah it's awesome I know the atmosphere is set to receive the Apostle of God to be a blessing you know if you leave me to introduce this man I'll just say one thing somebody who loves God and who has followed God all through hallelujah I will not have many things to say about him again I'll just say he's my brother so I'm going to go out of here and we are going to take an audiovisual introduction and intro of my brother and after that the next voice you will hear will be the apostle Hallelujah. Um, I think um, there's a technical hiccup somewhere, but they are working on it. I would, I would love to have it. But I believe that um, there's so much to be said about him, but I didn't want to read it. And that's why I, I really want to call for this. He's a man I've known for many, many years. We've been together doing good things together hallelujah for about two decades hallelujah that's a long time ago he's a man of prayer a man that God has called as a prophet to the nations that God has used to touch many lives both spiritually and physically and he's there president and the CEO of David O's ministry. This ministry, I'm telling you, um, you know, yesterday we we're, we're, were having dinner together and then we're, I was saying that, man of God, to, for you to move into nations where you don't live in and to gather people and impart their lives, it means God is with you. Nicodemus says something, he said, no man can do these things except God be with you and I know it's God who is with this man of God and God has brought him all the way to us to be a blessing to us um, church with a standing ovation I want us to receive the ministry of the apostle of God a man gifted with a prophetic great prophetic ministry the apostle David Ousu. put your hands together and let's receive him God bless you
begin to talk to God, just tell the Lord to speak to you today. Lift up your voice and come on, speak to the Lord. Tell the Lord to give you a word. A word that will shift you to your next level. A word that will move you to where you belong. A word that will transform you and edify you. Come on, lift up your voice right here. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Malio Jabrandis Gapa. Ligado Jabahande de Debo Jabrante Telimigadoja. La Brandus Katene Mekapali Abrahadis Kata. Come on, somebody, let me hear you. Let the fruit of your lips rise up to the eternal Emmanuel. Come on, bless him. Lift up your voice. Say something to magnify his holy name. Give him all the glory and give him all the worship in this place. Libado Shabahadi Zagrandos Kabahaya. Librahande de Bosch Kabahan Tetelia Brahadus Kaba. Come on, worship him. Limado Shabahadaya. Rapa Papa Pada Brashala Labrantata. Ligado Shabahadia Atonimi Ata. Come on, lift up your voice. Limi ato shabahandaya. Ligado shabadimi ante. Oh Jesus. It's you that I see. It's you that I see. Eva limi ato shabahaya. I'm the center of it all. Lord, it's you that I see. It's you that I see yeah. For there is power in your name Miracles happen in your name, God Miracles happen in your name As we lift a voice and praise As we lift a voice and praise Tonight we bless your holy name. 
We say glory, honor, dominion, and power be unto you. There is power in your name. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, your name alone shall be exalted. May you speak to us tonight and we shall be spoken unto. Let your word come in illumination with understanding. Clarity to the simple. I seize this atmosphere and I declare this meeting, the meeting of the Holy Ghost. Spirit of God, have your way. Let there be impartation. Let there be the move of your spirit like never before. In Jesus' matchless name have we prayed and everyone shouted amen. Somebody shout a better amen. You can be seated in the heavenly places. God bless you. Look at your neighbor in the eyes. Look at your neighbor in the eye and say, neighbor. Can you please give me some volume here? Look at your neighbor in the eye and say, neighbor. Today, your life will never, ever be the same again. Say, neighbor, tonight, every mountain in your life shall be moved if you believe that put your hands together for jesus we appreciate god for tonight and we thank god for our lives and uh, we thank god for every one of you come on put your hands together for yourselves for coming for making it tonight hallelujah we appreciate god even for um, the team in dallas that organized this meeting that was such that is such a powerful 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 great work that they have done come on let's honor god for their lives let's honor god for them let's honor god for them amen we thank god for their lives you thank god for all the other people that came from other states as well we honor god for you some of the leaders that came from other states come on let's appreciate them appreciate them appreciate them appreciate them we thank god for you we thank god for the great ministers also that came flew miles from um, 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 various places to be part of this we thank god for pastor joe mito come on let's appreciate the man of god oh appreciate is that how you appreciate in grace honor god for the grace of god upon his life hallelujah you know we like he said we started from kenya and then to ghana and then we are here hallelujah amen and and next year we are we are going we are adding more other nations to the glory of god hallelujah Amen. Let's appreciate God for his life. Appreciate God for his life. Appreciate God. We thank God for Pastor Bomi as well. Come on, appreciate Pastor Bomi. Appreciate Pastor Bomi. Powerful woman of God. We, we met in Seattle last year and uh, I saw her minister and I said, I want you to be part of my conference next year. God bless you for coming. Come on, appreciate Pastor Bomi. Appreciate her. And we thank God for Pastor David King. Come on, appreciate Pastor David King. All the way from Seattle, God bless you, God bless you, bless you. And now uh, come my son from California, Pastor Richmond, who is going to get ordained tomorrow. Come and appreciate Pastor Richmond of Owusu, hallelujah, amen, amen. And I've got uh, another son from, all the way from Kenya, General Cargo, come and appreciate General for me, hallelujah. Man of God, I, I, forgive me your name, come on, Pastor Obi, come on, appreciate Pastor Obi. Obi, come on, appreciate Pastor Obi for me. Hallelujah. Appreciate Pastor Obi. And I've got a brother of mine. We have been praying together for the past 20, over 20 years. Not that praying like, I mean, we pray, we pray like we meet and pray for 20 years. I remember many, many years ago, we used to pray every other Friday from 10 to 4 me him and some other gentlemen and the good news is all of us that used to pray is it which church was is it um methodist church we used to pray in the methodist church from 10 to 4 10 to 4 all the young men that used to pray that time about 20 years ago all of us are pastors that time we were just young men who were zealous for god amen we were just praying we would gather in the methodist church in kumasi and we would be praying one day i remember I had gone to preach in my church i was just a brother but they used to give me opportunity to preach in my church and right after our service it was time for us to go and pray i mean our usual um, um, um fellowship prayer meeting so we gathered in there and we started praying and as they started praying i told them told them man of god you see give me some few minutes i want to go to the back to lie down a bit and i will come back and i lie down from 11 before i realized it was 4 a.m 
we had closed the meeting, amen. He's been a good brother of mine. We, we served in campus together, and uh, he's a man of prayer. He has a great church in Ghana, and he pastors uh, one of the Fountain Gate churches in Kumasi. Come on, let's appreciate Pastor Yongi Aforo. Appreciate him for me. Appreciate him for me. La two years ago, we, he, he was with me here, I mean, for the um, 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 Grace Encounter, and he's here again. Such a brother. I mean, two years ago, we went to, I'm a different, we went to Pennsylvania as well. Yeah, and I think another state, and, and to Toronto, it was powerful. Hallelujah. Yes, come on, let's honor God for his life. Amen. Amen. Good to see you, Nora. Good to see you. Let's appreciate Nora Odieso from Atlanta. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, I want us to, tonight, I just want to tax a little bit and we pray. Amen. Are you ready to pray? Are you ready to pray? Now, tomorrow, we'll be flying 40,000 feet above sea level. So tomorrow, just tonight, I just want to take you a bit slow and then we can push in prayer. Amen. Say after me, I receive the word. Shout it like your voice is yours. Say, I receive the word. I believe the word. I work on the word. The word works on me. Say it again. I receive the word. I believe the word. I work on the word. The word works on me. I want to speak to you briefly on something I've titled Making Prophetic Decrees. Somebody shout, Making Prophetic Decrees. Actually, I'm speaking from you from my first book ever written. Making Prof. I've got books here, Breaking the Curse of Poverty. Get a copy, it shall help you. If you are a lady and you are believing God to keep your marriage or get married, get this book, How to Attract the Attention of Your Man. It will help you how to attract the attention of God. It will help you making prophetic decrees in prayer. That is what I'm speaking from today. Breaking soul ties and spiritual marriages. Get a copy. The prayer mantle. Get a copy. It will help you. Don't give up. It's possible. Powerful, inspirational book. Get a copy. Um, dream code. The dream code, how to interpret dreams God's way. When you have a dream, how you can interpret the dreams and the visions you have. Never ever go to Google and Google your dreams. Google is not born again. Google is not a prophet. Are you hearing me? So don't go to Google and say, I had a dream I was in a river. What does it mean? What the, 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 the feedback you may get may not be the best. Hallelujah. So if you want to learn how to interpret your dreams, get this. There are examples of dreams and their interpretations in it it will help you and after service i'll autograph it for you amen somebody say making prophetic decrees now, i want you to write these things down if you can otherwise just take note and then we shall be able to go number one if your bible is yours if you have a notebook a pen or you can write some things down same say after me my tank has creative power now write it down. Your tank has creative power. You, your tank carry creative abilities. Your tank has creative power. Number two, your confessions determine your possessions. What you confess determines what you possess. In this world, God made us in such a way that we are controlled by words. Words carry energy that draw to you what you declare. So your confessions determine your possessions. Number three, your tank is connected to your world. Your tank is connected to the words you say and your tank is connected to your world number four you can never go beyond the words you speak you cannot go beyond the words you speak you can never go beyond the words you speak the words you speak set boundaries for you or the words you speak stir you or spur you to your next level the words you speak can either set a boundary for your life 
or the same words you speak can shift you to your next level. Whatever you speak, you see. What you are seeing in your life right now is as a result of the things you have spoken over your life or the things someone has spoken over you. We are products of the things we speak or the things that has been spoken over our lives. The direction of your life is controlled by the words you declare. The direction of your life is controlled by the words you declare. Let me say this. See, if I lift this book and I drop it, what happens? It comes down, isn't it? There is a force that has been set in motion to make sure that this book comes down. That is what, who knows that? Where's gravity? It's a physical law that has been set in motion. The law of gravity makes sure that everything that goes up comes down. In as much as there are physical laws that makes things happen, in the same way, there are spiritual laws that make sure things happen in the spirit to us and for us as believers. One of the spiritual laws is the law of decree. Somebody say the law of decree. Shall we say the law of decree? Jesus in Mark chapter 11 enacted the law of decree. And from the day Jesus set that law in motion, any time there is a decree or any time anybody makes a decree, that decree becomes effected in the spirit, waiting to manifest in the life of believers. Now go with me to Mark chapter 11, if you would, and then we shall be able to move on from there. Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11. If your Bible is yours. Go with me to Mark chapter 11, reading from verse 15. For the sake of time, let's get to 19. For the sake of time, Mark 11 verse 19. Mark 11 verse 19. Mark 11 verse 19. Can we have it on the screen? Shall we read one go? very thin. Okay, let me read from my Bible. Mark 11 verse 19. One go. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Next verse. And Peter calling him to remembrance said unto him, Master, Behold, the fig tree which thou kissest is withered away. Yes? Next verse. And Jesus answered unto them, Have faith in God. Uh -huh. Now let's read this from the top of our voices. Verse 23. One go. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say to this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, but shall believe 
that those things which he said shall come to pass verse 24 yes therefore I say unto you and you shall have them God bless his word and cause his word to bless his people now the scripture talks about Jesus entered into was on his way to Jerusalem and the Bible says that he came on his way he fell hungry and he saw a fig tree somebody say a fig tree and the Bible says when Jesus saw the fig tree Jesus expected to see fruit on the fig tree but when he got there the Bible says it was not time for the fig tree to bear fruit in other words there was no way there would be fruit on the fig tree but Jesus made a decree and cursed the fig tree and said because you could not produce fruit no one shall eat of you from this day forward and the Bible says they left and went their way but when they were coming back Peter saw the fig tree and brought it in remembrance and said master the fig tree that you cursed has withered away now the reason why Jesus cursed the fig was not because of the fact that he was so hungry to an extent that he could not control his hunger he wanted to demonstrate something to the disciples about the power of decree somebody say the power of decrees Jesus spoke to the fig and said this fig no one shall eat fruit of you and after 24 hours as they were passing by they saw the same fig tree and the bible says that the fig tree had withered away and peter said master the fig tree that you cursed had withered away and he said believe in god and have faith what so he said whosoever shall say even to a mountain that it must be removed and be planted into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart you shall have whatsoever that he said now it was a prophetic statement that Jesus made Jesus said anybody that speaks to even a mountain and doesn't doubt My first question here is this. Why will Jesus say whosoever? He didn't say you believers. Jesus made a statement from the day Jesus said whosoever shall say it became a spiritual law. That means whether you are born again or you are not born again when you make a decree into the spirit that words or that decree you make has the capacity to control your environment he didn't say believers shall say he said whosoever shall say can you give me that scripture again um, um, mark 11 verse 23 just the verse 23 alone mark 11 23 jesus said whosoever shall we read says for verily i say unto you that whosoever shall what come on he said whosoever shall what yes he said, whosoever shall say that is why even buddhists and worldly people even teach about positive confession they will tell you that if you want your life to be better look into the mirror every day and declare something upon yourself and let me tell you from the day jesus made this statement he enacted a spiritual law called decree that whatever you declare it has the capacity to become and to happen our maps has got creative abilities now give me proverbs chapter 18 verse 21 when you read Proverbs chapter 18 verse 21, the Bible says that life and death are in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. In other words, if you want life, it is in your tongue. If you want death, it is still embedded within your tongue. Now let's read the scripture. One go. 
Mm-hmm. Now the Bible says death. Somebody say death. And what? Life are in the power of the tongue. Now I want to break down this scripture as I begin. Now Jesus, the scripture says death and life are in the power of the tongue. The word death there embeds any negative thing you can think about. Death, poverty, pain, sickness, evil. They are in the power of your tongue. And the word life there comprises any positive thing you can think about. Life, prosperity, favor, increase, blessing. They are also in the power of the tongue. Are you hearing me? And he says, they that love it shall eat what? The, the fruits thereof. Now let me tell you, every single word you speak is a seed. Every word you make and every word you declare is a seed you have sown. And the results of your words become the fruit for you. So when you say, I am favored, you have sown a seed. When you say, I am lifted, you have sown a seed. When you say, I am healed, it's a seed you have sown. A time, you see, when you sow a seed, do you see the result? I mean, does the seed germinate immediately? No, it takes some time for every seed you sow to grow and to germinate and to bear fruit. Now, this scripture says, life and death are in the power of the tank and dead that love it shall eat what? The fruit of it. In other words, anytime you speak, you are sowing seeds. Later on, you will eat the fruit. So if I were you, instead of sowing negative seeds upon my life, I will sow I am the head and not the tail. I will sow I am above and not beneath. I will sow I am going higher and higher. I will sow that doors are opening for me. You must learn how to sow seeds of positivity over every situation that you encounter see that is why it's so wrong when you begin to confess negative things upon yourself because let me tell you God made us when you read Psalm 82 verse 6 the Bible calls us deputy gods somebody say deputy gods we are deputy gods God says ye are gods when you read from the message version of the Bible the Bible says we are deputies of God in other words that which God when, some, when we say someone is a deputy that means that when the main man is not there they are the second day, the deputy becomes the one in, in, in power isn't it so when God says we are deputy gods and God has creative power in other words when God is not creating he gives us the power to create and the way we create is by speaking when you speak i am the head and not the tail you are creating headship when you speak i am blessed and i am prospering financially you are creating prosperity over your life everything that you seek to see in your life you create it by speaking see there was a young man many years ago that that lived for only 25 years and, and this young man um, was a he was a very talented he was here in america talented gifted singer and and he lived for only 25 years and he said he was was a hip, um, worldly singer by the name of um, um tupac how many of you have heard the name tupac shaka because some of you, you you were born in church so you don't understand what who tupac is how many of you have heard of Tupac and you used to sing Tupac? Wow, wow, good. I'm not alone. Hallelujah. Now, watch this. Now, one day there was, there was, there was um, 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 a, 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 a tele, um, um, an interviewer on TV um, 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 that was interviewing Tupac. And he asked Tupac a very simple question. And he was called Benjamin Swaski. He was asking, he was, was on TV with Tupac and years back and asked Tupac, 15 years from now where will you be and Tupac said I can give you two answers the best case scenario and the worst case scenario Tupac said the best case scenario is that I'll be a multi-millionaire but the worst case scenario is that you find me in the cemetery two years later Tupac was shot with four bullets one on his thigh one on his arm two on his chest he actually declared his death 
He says, I may either be a mortal millionaire later, or I may be, you can only find me in the cemetery. Just two years after he made that statement, he was shot four bullets. What am I trying to say? The words you speak has the capacity to control the direction of your life. Are you following me? In Numbers chapter 14 verse 28, when the children of Israel were leaving Egypt and the Bible says they were go on their way to the promised land, they began to murmur and they began to complain and God said to Moses, Moses, tell the people that whatever they declare in my ear, that is what I am going to do unto them. Give me Numbers 14 28. Shall we read one go? Shall we read everybody? Let's read the scripture. One go. Say yes, the Lord, as ye have spoken in my ear, so will I. So will I. This is God speaking. He says, Say unto them, as truly as I live, say yes, who? Come on, say yes, who? Say yes, who? As ye have spoken in my ears, so will I do unto you. My question is, What have you been speaking in the ears of God? He says, whatever you speak in my ear, I, the Lord, that is what I will do. That is why I don't like negative people around me. I am always confessing negative. I mean, I'm always confessing positive. I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. I am a mortal millionaire. I've been telling you about my jet, my private jet that is coming. I'm confessing it so that the next time you see me in a jet, you don't get jealous. Are you hearing me? Yes. I mean, it is, it is, it is, it is our tongue that determines the direction of our lives. God says, say unto them as truly as I live. Whatever you have spoken in my ears, so will I do unto you. Somebody begin to speak something in the ears of God. Begin to declare that doors are opening. Begin to declare that the finances are coming. Begin to declare that new jobs are coming. Begin to declare in the ears of God. Begin to speak it. He says, whatsoever you have spoken in my ears, say yes, the Lord. See, most of us, we are, the way I'm, I don't think I'll ever get married. God has heard it. I, I, I don't think my life will move forward. God has said it. Let me tell you, from the day God made this world, you see, when you read the book of Genesis, the Bible says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Everything God wanted to see, he spoke it into being. He spoke the lights and they came. He spoke the waters. He's, and, but when he came to man, he said, let us make man in our own image, after our own likeness, so that, why? Why would God say, why didn't God speak man into being? He spoke the trees he spoke the animals he spoke every other thing else into existence but when it came to man he said let us make man to have creative abilities like us to also come and speak for things to happen so in genesis chapter 2 after god made the animals the bible says god brought the animals to adam and said to adam speak unto the animals so adam calls a lion it was adam that gave names of the animals through his voice through the things he said adam looks at the, the lion and see the lion as a cannibal and said from today you shall be called a lion adam look at the sheep and calls the sheep a sheep so the bible says in genesis 2 verse 19 and but when it comes to mind it says and whatsoever name adam gave the animals and so it was when god was creating the bible says and god said and it was so then god said and it was so he comes to church chapter 2 it was not and god said again and adam said and it was so see you must have the capacity as a child of god to speak over your life let me tell you god is my witness there is not a single day i don't speak over my life I make pronouncements over my life every day. Why? Because I know the direction of my life is controlled by the things I say. Today we are going to speak over our situations. We are going to declare over our situations and command them to give way to a testimony. Are you hearing me? We are going to declare. 
let that situation, let that mountain be moved and let there be a testimony in your life. When we, let, me, let me go to James. Go with me to James chapter 3. Let me show you something. Like I said today, I just want to take you slow and then we can pray. James chapter 3. James 3. Verse 2. James 3 verse 2 to 5. James 3 verse 2 to 5. Shall we read one go? Shall we read again? One go? Mm Mm-hmm. Behold, we put peace in horses' mouths that they may obey us and we turn about their whole body. Uh Behold also the ships which though they be so great are driven by, are driven of fierce winds. Yet they are turned about with a small hem Whosoever that the governor listed, even so, the tank is a little member. Now, let's go back to um, verse 3, and then I try to. Um, 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 um. It says, A horse is a big animal, but it says, there is a bit in the mind of a horse that control the entire body of a horse. Now he goes to verse 4 and he says, a ship is a big thing, but it is also controlled by a small rudder. Likewise, just as a horse is controlled by something in the mouth, and a ship is controlled by a small rudder, in the same way, the body is a big organism, but it is controlled by a little part of it called a tank. Are you following? So behold, also shifts. Now let's go to verse 5. Say, so even so, the tank is a little member and boasted of great thing. Behold, how great a member of it. Now let's continue. Verse 6 for me. Shall we read? General, get up. Now I want you to watch this. Come. Go back. Come. Go back. Come. Go back. What is happening? Did I move him physically? He's a strong man. If we are to stand here and fight, he may be able to beat me up. But guess what? I am controlling him just with my tongue. Are you following me? Now, let's assume this man is called favor. And let's assume, no, you cannot be called poverty. Let's assume. This is favor. And every day I say, favor come. And favor comes to me. I say, wealth come. Wealth comes to me. Everything I call, in as much as you don't see it, it is moved in the spirit to where you are. So I am calling favor. Please come get close. And I am calling wealth. And it is coming. I'm calling prosperity. Every I say in the name of Jesus, prosperity is mine. As I say it in the spirit, it is drawn to me. It doesn't matter where it is. It is drawn to me. I call it and it comes. I call good marriage, it comes. I call opportunities, it comes. I call open doors, it comes. Why? Because I understand Jesus said that whosoever shall say 
it will happen but most of us instead of us calling favor and it comes to you money and it comes to you good health and it's come to you you are calling the wrong things i am not making it I, I, I'm, I'm, on, I'm sick. I'm dying. Man of God. See, the more you speak it, the more it draws itself to you. The Bible says, whosoever shall say, whatever you declare is what you see. The Bible says we are deputy gods. You, you, you have got creative ability. Everything you declare has the capacity to manifest. Today, you are going to call some things into your life. You are going to call everything that you desire into your life. And heaven shall draw it to you. If you are here, shout, I receive that. You must have the capacity to believe that we are going to push. Let me thank you, sir. You can have your seat. See, there was a king called King David. And in Psalm 72, David was still a king and he called his son called Solomon and David makes pronouncement over his son called Solomon and David said in Psalm 72 please work it for me I mean from verse 8 David said in your reign there shall be peace from coast to coast David said in your reign things will begin to move I mean you shall have dominion from sea to sea David said in your reign Solomon the kings of Sheba and the queen of Sheba shall bring gifts to you now David spoke over the life of Solomon whilst David was still a king. Now, when Solomon became a king, when David died, the Bible says that one day the queen of Sheba was sitting in Ethiopia and he carries gold and goes all the way to where Solomon was in Jerusalem and gives gold to Solomon. Ladies and gentlemen, my question is, why is it that why didn't Queen of Solomon carry clothes or carry silver or carry anything? Why? The reason why the Queen of Sheba had to carry gold was this. It was a prayer that the father of Solomon had made over David. It was a decree that has been pronounced and said a time will come that the Queens of Sheba and the Kings of Sheba will carry gold and bring it to you. So Solomon becomes king. He sits down and the words of his father is activated. And people carry presents and bring it to a man. See, that is why as a father and as a mother, you don't have to be speaking ill over your children. You must be pronouncing positivity and be declaring things over their lives. You see, I make decrees when I'm in London. I, in the middle of the night, I speak over my children. Wherever I make pronouncements over them. Why? Because I believe as a father, I have got parental authority. And whatever I declare happens. Now let's read um, um, Psalm 72. From verse 8. One go. This is the prayer of David over Solomon. Uh-huh. He shall have dominion also from... Let's all read one go. He shall have dominion also from sea to sea. Uh-huh. 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 And the kings of Sheba and Seba shall offer what? The kings of Sheba shall offer what? Yes. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Next verse, verse 12. Uh huh. Now, David make a prayer over Solomon. Now, I want us to go to from verse, verse 6. Take me back from to verse 6. Now, take, let's start from verse 3. Let's go to verse 3 before we come to 6. Go to verse 3. Yes, uh-huh. Read, let's read one go. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Mm 
Now, David said over Solomon, as long as you live, the mountains shall bring peace. Somebody say peace. Shout it, say peace. Shout it, say peace. Solomon is the only king in Israel that never fought one battle. Solomon never went to war. All his time of reign. All the kings of Israel went to war. But Solomon did not even go to war. Why? Not even one battle. Why? Because his father had made a pronouncement over him. That you shall dwell in peace. His father had made pronouncement over him. Let me tell you that the queens of Sheba shall come and offer gifts over you. I mean, unto you. The point you, I'm trying to make you understand is that the decrees you make now, they are seized. Waiting to bear fruit for you to enjoy in the future. But the question is, what decrees are you making over your lives? What pronouncements are you making over your lives? It is high time that as a people of God, we began to say, we, God said to the people of Israel in Numbers 14, say, whatsoever you say in my ear, so will I do unto you. We are going to change our language from now. We are going to be speaking like kingdom people. Men and women that believe and understand how the spiritual world operates. See, whatever you declare, it happens. See, when you read Job chapter 22, give me Job chapter 22 verse 28. Job 22 verse 28. I, I like the way the amplified version of the Bible puts it. If you've got it amplified, fine. If you don't have, just give me Job 22 28. Shall we read one go? He said what? Did he say the pastor shall decree a thing? Did he say the prophet shall decree a thing? He said you shall also decree a thing and it shall be established unto you. When you speak it will happen not because the man of God said it. It will happen because you said it. Let me tell you, I'm a prophet by the grace of God. But let me tell you, I know this for sure. The greatest prophet on earth, as far as your life is concerned, is you. You are the greatest prophet of your own destiny. Did you hear what I said? You are the greatest prophet of your own life. As far as your life is concerned, there is no greater prophet anywhere apart from you. You must be able to look into the mirror and prophesy over your life and declare that my life is turning around and declare that doors are opening unto me. Declare that finances are breaking out. Declare that my marriage is working. Declare that my ministry is working. Declare that my finances are moving on. You must be the prophet of your life and stand up and make a decree over your life and declare over your destiny. If you are always waiting for somebody to give you a word, I'm telling you, your life will be delayed. Because sometimes, the word that sometimes you are waiting for someone to speak unto you, it may not come the way you want. But when you yourself take your destiny into your own hands and begin to prophesy in the morning over your life, prophesy in the evening over your life, prophesy at night over your life, your destiny and your life will begin to have a turnaround. We go to Ezekiel chapter 37 and then we can pray. Give me Ezekiel. Now, many of us talk about, before we go to um, Ezekiel, let me say this. Many of us talk about Jacob taking the blessing of his all. That Jacob took the blessing of his all. What blessing did Jacob take? All the things Isaac gave Jacob were mere words. It was words. Jacob took food to his father Isaac. And all that the father did was to speak words over Jacob. In Genesis chapter 27, verse 27 downwards, he began to speak words, he began to speak words, he began to speak words. And the Bible says Jacob left the father's house with a stick. But by the time he was coming back in Genesis chapter 32, he said something very profound. He said, I left my father's house with a stick, but I am coming back with two companies. All that he left his father's house with were the words that were spoken over his life. And those words had the capacity to change his life around. 
turn his situation around. The words that were spoken over his life had the capacity to give him a possession that even his own brother. See, Esau was the one that stayed in the house. He, he took all the possessions of the father, the land, the cattle, the silver, the gold. See, Abraham had a great possession. He gave it to Isaac. Isaac also became wealthy. The Bible says, and Isaac began to prosper and continued to prosper until he became very prosperous. So, Esau had two generation possession. But guess what? Who became greater? Jacob. Why? Because he understood the power of the words that were spoken over his head the declarations that were made over Jacob had the capacity to make him greater than a man that has two generations of possessions all the wealth of Abraham all the wealth of Isaac they all were given to Esau but guess what Jacob became greater why because he understood the power of decrees what words has been spoken over your head you need to understand, ladies and gentlemen, I said to you, your life, what you are seeing in your life now is as a result of what you yourself, you have spoken or what somebody has spoken over your life. Who has spoken over you? What word are you running with? I believe I can never go down in life. Why? Because I strongly believe there is a word over my life. And every morning, I make sure I make pronouncements over my destiny. What words have you spoken over your destiny? Jacob said, I left my father's house with a stake, but I am coming back with a great possession. After today, as I declare over you, may you walk out of here with a great possession. I said you shall walk out of here with a great possession. You shall walk out of here with a great possession. I speak over your life. You shall be the head and not the tail. As you leave this auditorium, I decree and declare, the Lord shall begin to open doors unto you. As you leave this auditorium, I begin to declare, every financial breakthrough that you are waiting for, I declare, let it be released over your life. In the mighty name of Jesus, every healing you need, every breakthrough you need, I command the release. 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 In the name of Jesus. Somebody shout, I have a word. Shout it, say, I have a word. Let's do Genesis 37 and then we can, we can pray. Give me, sorry, Ezekiel chapter 37. Sit down for two minutes and then we can pray. We're going to stand on Ezekiel 37 and then we, we make a prayer. Ezekiel 37. Ezekiel chapter 37 from this one. Uh, shall we read one go? The hand of the Lord. And put me down in the midst of a valley. Uh-huh. Now, the Bible says, Ezekiel said, the hand of the Lord came upon him, and the hand of the Lord took him in the midst of a valley. And the Bible says, he said, the valley was full of bones. Now, bones is a typology of a hopeless situation. Somebody say, hopeless situation. So, Ezekiel said, I saw a hopeless situation, and the situation was in a valley. That means it was at a deep, deep, hopeless, uncontrollable place that nothing can be done about. It's, it's in a situation it's at a place where there is nothing that anybody can do. Uh huh. And he says God made me pass about them and I saw that there were so many in the open valley and they were very dry in other words they were very hopeless. Next verse and he said to me son of man is it possible for these bones to come alive and I made an answer and said it is you it is for you to say, oh Lord. Now look at the question God put. And this is where we are going to stand to pray. God said to Ezekiel, can this situation change? And Ezekiel said what? It is for you to say. Ezekiel said to God, Lord, it is not up to, uh, up to me to say. It is for you to say. And let's hear what God said to him. Next verse. And he said to me again. He, and, and again he said to me. 
be a prophet to come on did you hear that he said be a prophet to what the bones is a typology of a situation what god is saying be a prophet to the situation god is calling you to be a prophet to your situation tonight Oh my God, I, I wish I came to church. God is calling you to be a prophet to your situation. In other words, God is saying prophesy to the situation. Prophesy to that, 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 that Greek card you are waiting for. Prophesy to that sickness in your body. Pro say be a prophet to these bones. Be a prophet to that marriage. Be a prophet to your situation. Speak to it and tell it to turn around. When Jesus met the devil in Luke chapter 4. Do you know what the devil said to Jesus? Jesus said, the devil said to Jesus, tell this stone to become bread. He didn't say change. He said, speak to the stone and let it become bread. Why? Because the devil understood the dynamics of the spirit. That in the spirit for anything to change, there must be a speaking. The devil said, speak to the stone, tell it. And let it change, change into bread. He didn't say change the stone into bread. The devil says speak to it. Tell it. Command it. And let it turn into bread. In other words, for anything that is a stone that is hard, difficult, challenging to shift into a provision, there must be a speaking. He says, be a prophet to these bones and say to them, oh ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. I don't know any dry bone in your life. Today we are going to command the word of God to it. We are going to command the word of God to that dry bones. We are going to speak to it and command it to shift around. Are you ready to pray? Be upstanding. Let's be upstanding. Let's be upstanding. We are going to make decrees upon our lives. And decrease upon every dry bone situation in our lives. We are going to command it to come alive. Say in the name of Jesus. Shout it like your voice is here. Say in the name of Jesus. I command every dry bones. I command every dry situation. I command every hopeless situation in my life today I declare let it receive life I speak the life of God over every dead situation in the name of Jesus I decree and declare let it receive life let it receive life as I lift up my voice I decree and declare let there be a turn around to every situation lift up your voice kato shaba lika brahatoni mi kapara hato sakran teni mi kapara tos katia etene nene me kapara toni mi kapara rapa papa pala brata tani mi kapara hato ni abrako shala la brata ta iselelelele kapara tani mi kapara
responded it is a sign you can speak to anything let me tell you i make declarations over my year over my day over my month so if you live with me in the house you might think i'm a madman some of the things i do sometimes is crazy sometimes i open all the windows in the house and i begin to command i say i call money to come I look at the window from the east. I say, I call wealth, money from the east. I call money from the west. I call money from the south. I call, and I begin to anoint my hands and make decrees. I anoint my children every day. Why? Um, every week, I beg your pardon. Why? Because I believe prophetically the oil preserves. One day, a couple came to a house in London to stay with us. And I was anointing all the children in my house. And, and you know there's these children that sometimes it's like they are asleep but they are not asleep so this I mean this um, my, 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 my wife's friend's um, son was sleeping with my, in my son's room so as I go to the room and anoint everybody I anoint them the boy was watching me so after the second week he reported me to the mother he says when we are asleep prophet will be coming to touch our head with oil so the mother asked me say prof so do you go to, in the middle of the night to touch the boys with oil? I said, yes. I said, please, do you have a problem with that? If you have a problem with me praying for my children and because you are under my roof and your son is under my roof, I need to anoint him. If you have a problem, I can move you to a hotel. But in this house, once a week, we anoint ourselves. Are you getting what I'm saying? You must take prophetic actions by yourself and make declarations by yourself stand upon the land of Dallas and wherever you, and you come from and speak and declare let the land yield for you let the land yield the harvest when I come out of every airport in the airport you see my hands with water why? as I walk out of the plane I carry and as I step out I pour water on the land you might think I'm crazy I'm not crazy I know what I'm doing I say in the name of Jesus let this land begin to speak for me let the land yield for me a harvest. Let the land preserve me. I speak over the land and command the land to yield. The land must respond. You are making a prayer right now. You are declaring today is the 17th of March. 
from today the 17th of march to 31st of december you are declaring no evil shall come near your dwelling no evil shall come near your dwelling you are declaring that god shall bring good news favor shall come to you blessings shall come to you wealth shall come to you good health shall come to you i want you to lift up your voice and begin to make a decree begin to make a pronouncement we decree and declare in the name of Jesus as the name antaya rapa papa la brashata ikelelelele bosha alimi abrantata rapa papa lia bata ateni mi kabranta rapa palia bakosha asana na na branta ba atelia basoa yei malimi katoa atelelelelele katia hatua anta rapa papa palia batua anta rapa pala brasha la la branta ta etelelelelele kapalia ta etelelelele 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 kapalia ta palia matoni mi kapanta palia matona na na mataya raba baba bala branta ta raba baba bala branta ta asolia brantoni mi kapa and we are out of here say in the name of jesus in the name of jesus i decree and declare i decree and declare oh lord, oh lord let my helpers let my helpers come come say wherever my helpers are wherever my helpers are i call them forth i call them forth from the north from the, north, from the, south, from the south from the east from the and from the west from the i command i command my destiny helpers wherever they are let them come to me i call them i call my helpers oh lord every destiny helper ordained for my life i call them 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 in the name of jesus Every person, maybe tomorrow I'll talk about it. There are three types of people you need in your life. Somebody say three types of people. The first one is that you need the man that carries information. Somebody say information. Somebody that can come and tell you, do this and your green card will come. Somebody that will help you, give you some piece of information that will change your life for good. Somebody say the man with information. Naaman was the minister for defense for the Syrian army, but all he needed for his forever leprosy to be cured was little information from a house girl. The house girl in Naaman's house said, Sir, if you can see the prophet in Samaria, you shall be healed. Are you hearing me? You need someone that will just give you... Some. See, the greatest asset in this current world is not time, it's not money, it's data, information. One piece of information can change your life. Say, oh Lord, every information I need, every information I, I need, command it to appear. I command it to appear. Any man that carries information, man that carries for, information. My for my next level, oh Lord, oh Lord. Release, them. release them. Let me tell you, anybody.
Anybody that is ahead of you knows something you don't know. Anyone that is ahead of you knows something you don't know. The only reason why you are behind is that you don't know certain things that they know. If you get to know what they know and you do what they do, you get ahead. Say, oh Lord, release my destiny helper. That helper that carries information. Release them. Release them. Release them. Release them. Release. You have been in America for years. Somebody can just connect you to one piece of information. Your life can change. The only problem is that Christians, they will not tell you. They will just say, it's the grace of God. They, they know what they are doing to make them. Say, man of God, it's just grace. May you find someone that will give you the keys. In the name of, the second person you need is the one that will give you physical help. Somebody say physical help. Somebody that can wire fifty thousand dollars into your account. <laughs> Somebody say physical help. Yes, you need someone. The man at the pool said, "Sir, I have been at this pool for thirty-eight years." He says, "I don't have a man to push me into the pool." He says, "At this pool, those that get help, those that get healed, are people that have got a man." He says, "Jesus said, do you want to be healed?" He says, "Sir, I don't have a man." I've been here for 38 years because I don't have a man. I prophesy over your life. May that one man appear in your life. That one man, may God release him. May God release him. May God release him. May God release him. See, if there is one thing I thank God for, is that I am a man that has been helped. I mean, I've seen help. Somebody say help. I mean, strange, extreme help. May God bring helpers to you. I said, may God release helpers to you. 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 In the name of Jesus, you are going to declare that may God bring you helpers. Helpers. People that will, be, who, that will be willing to help you without thinking twice. They, they, I, I always say, every greatest thing I have ever had, man of God, I never bought. Anything you can think of that is big in life. Big like house, car, whatever. I never. Somehow, God sends men to give me. I prophesy over your life. Yes. May God grant you helpers. Amen. Divine helpers. Yes. Helpers that will minister to you. Amen. Give you what you need. Amen. If you are here, shout I receive. Shout I receive. Shout I receive. May God give you someone that will wire a million dollars into your account. You don't believe it. May God give you someone that will, within the next one week, somebody will receive a financial miracle. Somebody will receive $50,000. Somebody will receive $100,000. A miracle that will shake your family. Receive it. In the name of Jesus. Now, see, the scripture that Jesus said in Mark chapter 11, Verses 24. Give me Mark 11, 24. Jesus said, when you pray, believe that you have them and you shall receive them. See, there is a protocol for receiving in this kingdom. The protocol for receiving something in the kingdom is that pray. Number one. Number two, believe that you have them. And then number three, you have them. The problem with us is when we pray, we are hoping to receive it before we believe. Are you getting me? Please give me the scripture. It says, for this reason I say unto you, whatever you, whatever, whatever you make a request for in prayer, have faith that it has been, have faith that it has been, and you will, so whatever request you make in prayer, have faith that it has already been given. He didn't say it will be given. Check the English. Have faith that it has been given. So after you pray, 
after you live here, believe that that one million is coming. My God, believe that that 50,000 walk in faith. Yes. And he says, after you have believed that it has been given, then it will be given. I don't know which version is this, but if you give me the new King James or King James, he said, believe that you have it and it shall be given. But it's still, it's almost, it's still the same. Say, have faith that it has been given. Therefore, I say unto you, whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe that you have what? Receive them and ye shall have them. So the protocol is pray, believe that you already have them. And you shall what? You are lifting up your voice. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I call my helpers. I call my helpers. From the north. From the north. From the south. From the, south, from the, east, from the east. And west. And west. As, I voice, As I lift up my voice in prayer, I command them to appear. Lift up your voice. Kato Shaba. Rababa Kado Shabrantata. Lebran Tony Mika Bratata. Apalalada Bakonimi Atanana Makata. Rabababala Brada Bada Brada Baduana Brasha Kata.
no weapon formed against me shall prosper every tongue that lifts itself against my life I declare is condemned 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 in the name of Jesus I see God sweep away darkness from you you are entering into the light of God you are entering into divine light receive it in the name of Jesus as you walk out of here I declare prophetically let the heavens open 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 from today over your life every desire upon your heart I declare it's released. 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 In the name of Jesus. Who be here? It's connected to Zimbabwe. You are connected to Zimbabwe. I want to make a prayer for three people because our time is already gone and minister to you and then tomorrow we can get deeper amen I sense a divine lifting coming for seven people after this meeting I see divine lifting somebody say divine lifting shout it say divine lifting Shout, he said, divine lifting. Let me pray for you. Mama, who is a Siama? Uh -huh. Your, 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 your husband's brother. Where is he? Any spirit of death released over a siyama, I declare, let it backfire. In the realm of the spirit, I see it's like a meeting has been held, and all of a sudden, a phone call came from Ghana to Michael that a siyama is dead. Say yes, the Lord. The husband is Michael. And Esiama is Michael's brother. I lift prayer. Kadimi Gado Shabaya. Any premature death released against Esiama, we declare, let it backfire. Let me tell you one thing. It would have been so strange that people would begin to even blame even your husband. Because I see it's like somehow he would have fallen and collapsed in his house. A new house that he's building. He would have, that man somehow would have come to that place and collapsed. And they would have blamed him. But say yes the Lord. Evil shall not come to your home. Kadimi azunimi gadaya. In the spirit of death released against the brother. That would have brought shame to the family. We declare, let it backfire. I said, let it backfire. I said, let it backfire. I said, let it backfire. Let me tell you. Tell him to come tomorrow, okay? And if possible, get me the picture of that brother. And we will stand and declare, evil shall not come to your home. Somebody lift your hands. Say in the name of Jesus. Every satanic assignment against my family, I declare, let it backfire. 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 
let it backfire let it backfire let it backfire hear me i see in place of that attack i see two major doors open for your husband and it shall be a, a some a company will call him and request for something like a consultancy he will just go he has a job that he does but that company will call him for some small work and it will bring a mega financial blessing to him it will get to do with things got to do with building and 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 like a structural something that he will have to design or help them do and through that there shall be a mega financial breakthrough lift your hands where is he he's at home where that, which company does he work for company what do they do they do engineering lift your hands I release favor for him open door for him divine lifting for him in the name of Jesus every door that needs to open somebody shout open shout it say open shout it say open shout it say open shout it say open lift your hands can somebody hold your, the baby hold that child for him hold that child hold that child I hear something that I don't understand what is Mashal your husband is where which hotel he's Mashal in the realm of the spirit I don't understand something I don't understand why it's like one feet is in Liberia and one feet is in Ghana and it's like an arrow shot all the way from Liberia. His dad is from Liberia. His father is from Liberia. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Half of the family are in Liberia, half of the family are in Ghana. That's why I said I see one feet in Liberia and another feet in Ghana. Somebody put your hands together for Jesus. Oh, I said, put your hands together for the Lord. Hear me, there is an arrow, the same arrow that killed the father. The father is from Liberia. Because I see an arrow shot from Liberia and it would have hit him. Specifically, it would have happened in the month of September, 11th of September this year. It has been prepared, shot, waiting to execute. But say yes, the Lord, the arrow would be hovering all of a sudden. It's like you become this. Like, like as he will be working all of a sudden you feel dizzy and he would have collapsed you would have rushed him to hospital but it would have been a different story lift up your hands and the family would have blamed you and said it is you that has killed him but I declare over your life evil shall not come to Masha it's Joshua Joshua, I declare, Maziga Duma Alimi Azote, Libra Zute Alimi Gadanimi Antahash. Who around you was born on a Friday? Your baby was born on a Friday. Are you breastfeeding? Okay, can you fast? Every Friday, fast for. Joshua and fast for your husband and declare that preservation be upon him. That your boy is going to become a great man. Where is the boy? Bring him. I release greatness. A time is going to come, he's going to occupy a very great seat in this country. He will not be an ordinary child. He will be a great man. Because at the time of birth, even the enemy wanted to kill this child. At the time of conception, but God kept this baby. This child is a prophetic child. And for that matter, I hear Oliver. That's his name. Oh, somebody put your hands together for Jesus. 
I hear in the spirit, God is going to elevate Oliver. Who here bears the name like Bounds? Bounds. Bounds. You're connected to somebody called Bounds. Bounds. I asked some, is there anybody connected to Zimbabwe? You, you, let me tell you one thing. God is going to do something for you. Should I, should I tell you, or you don't, you don't remember where you come from? Do you remember where you come from? You've been there, okay. You know, let's go. That's you. That's where you come from. Somebody put your hands together for Jesus. Oh, I said put your hands together for Jesus. Madam, have we met before? No, never. Wow. And God could tell me you come from Makufaya, Mashona land. That's where you come from. Who is Chipo? That's your name. Alagadaya. A gun in front of your And there is a one. We magnify your name. I like that you now. The one with us of fire. Your name is full of wonder. Come and magnify yourself. I like that you know. I like that the one who's clothed with fire Come and, come and manifest yourself I like my dying no. in your life as we were praying out of a sudden I saw chains break and the Lord said I should declare over you is your season to be elevated to a new a new dimension of your life I decree over you as I saw chains break off you I declare from today may you be liberated 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 may you be liberated, you be liberated. in the name of Jesus Every form of delay in your life and rejection in your life, say yes, the Lord, today it is broken. It's a new season for you, madam. Lift your hands right here. It's a new season for you. It's a new season for you. Kadi bihado shabahaya. Labradus kazene metatosha. Vali magosha branti alimi gatosha. From Ashona land. Who is Miles? My, Miles. Your husband is Miles. Where is he? He's at home. In a stronghold from Ashona land that destroys homes and families. I declare it shall not come to you. Any attack against your hope, Madimi Gadumi Adahayas, I prophetically declare, let it not prevail. Your home is preserved. Your home is preserved. Your home is preserved. Your home is preserved. 
Your home is preserved. Every one of you that, if you are married, raise your hand. If you are married, I speak over marriages. Every satanic attack against marriages, I decree and declare, let it backfire. 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 In the name of Jesus. Madam, tomorrow I want you to come and get me. If your husband is far and cannot come, just give me a picture of your husband. I want to stand and make a decree over you. If you can get me a picture of both of you together. Alright? Yes. It is your season and your time. Touch it. Sit down. Where's your, where's your son? Be seated. Be seated. Please be seated. Be seated. Be seated. Bring the son. Be seated. I speak over this young man. I command supernatural lifting. Supernatural lifting. Supernatural lifting. As he was born great, so shall he be. In Jesus' name. We declare that. Amen. Take a seat. Madam, I called you. I called you. I called you. You're also from Zimbabwe. Oh, lift your hands. Are you here tomorrow? I'll pray for you tomorrow, okay? Yes, sit down. Sit down. Somebody put your hands together for the Lord. Are you blessed you came to church? Are you blessed you came to church? Are you blessed you came to church? Are you blessed you came to the house of the Lord? See, my time is fast, friends, so I just want to run up and be close, all right? Because time is already gone. But listen to me. Tomorrow, somebody say tomorrow. There's going to be another dimension. Say another dimension. I want people here who... I see, I hear birthing. Somebody say birthing. Prophetically, I see people are going to birth testimonies. Strange testimonies. Unusual testimonies. After this month, this particular month, I see prophetically testimonies you never thought you would ever have. God is going to make it birth. Because prophetically, people are pregnant with testimonies that need to be released. And I speak over your life as you live here. May you step into unusual testimonies. Uncommon testimonies. In the mighty name of Jesus. That shall be your portion. I, I want us to prophetically connect to this meeting. The Lord said, raise men that can support this work. And cause, declare a prophetic birthing over their lives. I want to, I want people who can activate a prophetic seed for the conference. You want to release a prophetic seed? I just had a number nine. You can release a seed of nine hundred dollars prophetically into this conference. You want to connect the number nine signified birthing? If you can, just walk up here. Let me take an envelope from me right now and let me pray with you. I had seven people. Who needs to tap into unusual breakthroughs? Come forward. Stand here, please. I want you to write your name tomorrow and write three things you want God to do for you and put it in that envelope and come stand here at the altar and pray. Say things as you stand at the altar. Declare what you want God to do in your life. If you can, just walk up here. 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 You want to prophetically activate an unusual shift. Prophetically. Raise your hand wherever you are. I'll drop it in your hand even if you don't want to stand. Yes. Just prophetically. You want to birth something. Say what you want to birth. Declare over it. Yes. There are four more people that need to do this. They have come. Yes. You want to birth unusual. Yes. Wherever you are. Just let me drop it. Three more people. Three more people that need to do this. You want to birth on unusual. Two more people. Let me tell you, $900 would not make you go broke. It is a prophetic sacrifice that you are giving. Two more people. Well, right here. Yes, thank you. Bless you. Bless you. Hey, you are here. I didn't see you. Bless you. Bless you. Now, thank you. Now, you can have your seat. Uh, you can, if you can come forward, come forward, stand at the altar and speak. If you don't understand, come forward wherever you are. 
just come for it. Let me lay hands on you quickly, quickly. Give me oil. Give me, where is the oil? Give me oil. Give me oil. Give me oil. Give me oil. Prophetically, I want to touch your head and I declare you are birthing. You are birthing into unusual testimonies. You are birthing into unusual testimonies. Birth 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 unusual testimonies in the name of Jesus. Father, as they stand by the altar, let there be unusual release of testimonies in their lives. In the name of Jesus. You can have your seat. Somebody put your hands together for them. Put your hands together for them. If you can just release a simple seed of $230. Just come. It's a number. I hear numbers in my spirit. $230. That is what you are. Stand at the altar. You also. Stand at the altar. Stand at the altar. Just $230. That's all. And then we are closing. $230. Stand at the altar. And make a decree. Stand at the altar. Stand at the altar. Stand at the altar. Kadi bihada bashala ba de mi antaya. Libra do shazizi mi antaya. Now tomorrow, I want every one of us to do me a favor. Can you come with a bottle of oil? Olive oil. Can everyone come with a bottle of olive oil? We know olive oil? Yes, just come with a bottle of olive oil. Just come with a bottle of olive oil tomorrow. The details are on the screen. Cash up, sell, PayPal. You can release the details. $230. Come. If you are here and you want to do it, just come quickly. Lastly, if you can release a simple seed of $90. Just $90. Lastly, activate. Just come. Stand at the altar. You write your name on the emblem. If you have yours here, you can drop it at the altar. You write three things you want God to do for you. Tomorrow, I'm going to pray for you tomorrow. Okay? I have a prophetic word for you, but I'm carrying it to my hotel, to, the, to my room, and I'll give you tomorrow. Alright? It's a good word. God is going to give you a testimony soon. Tomorrow, I'm going to pick, get a microphone early. And I'll have time to minister to many people. Man of God is going to be your season for an overflow. It's a season for overflow. Unusual overflow for you. Unusual overflow. Unusual overflow for you. It's your season. Agnes, bless you. Bless you. Where's the oil? Let me touch God's people. As you stand by the altar, I decree and declare birth testimonies. When I touch you, you sit down. Birth testimonies. Birth testimonies. Birth testimonies. In the name of Jesus. Birth testimonies. Now, you tomorrow come with two bottles of oil. Okay? May you birth testimonies. In the name of Jesus. It's your season. I pray for you tomorrow. Birth testimonies. May you birth unusual testimonies for you and your household. Any attack against your household, I declare let it backfire. I release a turnaround. I see a dark cloud moving off you. And I see the light of God shining over you. It's a new season for you and your household. Receive it. Birth a new testimony. Birth a 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 testimony. Bear for testimony. Bear for testimony. Somebody put your hands together for the Lord. Now, can we please do a favor and come early tomorrow? How many of us are going to be here on time tomorrow? I want to hold the microphone very early. I mean, I have got like five prophetic messages I'm, I'm carrying back to my hotel. But I want to minister to you. I flew all the way over 21 hours. I did transit in Dubai, came here 16 hours from Dubai to here. I even felt like it was too much. I came to deliver. Somebody say deliver. 
So I want to give you a word. A word. You see, sometimes all you need is one word from God. Somebody say one word from God. What made me not to give up is one prophetic word God gave me in my life and in my ministry. All right? So you need one word. So make sure we come here early and you shall be blessed. Somebody, let's appreciate God. Let's appreciate God. Let's appreciate God. I want to appreciate some great men of God in the house. We've got Pastor Jerry and wife, Reverend Jerry and wife. Come on, let's appreciate Reverend Jerry. Oh, come on, appreciate Reverend Jerry. Good to see you. Say hallelujah. I'll be in Reverend Jerry's church on Sunday morning. So Sunday morning, all of us, somebody say all of us, we are going to Victory Bible Church. Amen. So, oh, put your hands together for Jesus. Sunday morning is a mandate. All of us, we are going to victory after that. Now, I will have one-on-one -on -one session after Sunday morning if I, I, I'm, I'm with you and you're going to be blessed. We have God, Pastor Akrofi. Pastor Akrofi, come on, let's appreciate Pastor Akrofi. Appreciate Pastor. Appreciate Pastor. Appreciate Pastor. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, let's put our hands together for the Lord, for what God has done. Amen. Are you blessed you came to the house of the Lord? Now, we have not taken our offering, our general offering. Just take your offering. Just take your offering. Just take your offering. If you came with an offering, the Bible says you don't come to the presence of God empty handed. Just take your offering. Just lift it up if you have one. Father, offering. Just lift your offering up. Let me pray over it. Father, I speak over our offering. Let it be a sacrifice unto you. Let it activate and open heavens in the name of Jesus. I prophetically declare in the mighty name of Jesus, let this be a seed that will yield and bear a harvest in our lives. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Just come and drop it at the altar here quickly for me. Just come and drop it. Walk up here and drop it. Just walk up here and drop it. Just walk up here and drop it. Where is the offering book? Just walk up here and drop it. 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 Hallelujah. Now, I understand there's another woman of God, Pastor Faustina. Where's Pastor Faustina? Let's appreciate Pastor Faustina. Oh, come on, let's appreciate her. Appreciate her for me. Appreciate her. Hallelujah. Shall we be upstanding? Let's be upstanding quickly. Now, on Sunday afternoon, if you want to see me one-on-one, -on -one, I'll make myself available. Amen. You want a one-on-one -on -one session with me? Um, just see LC or um, um, Nana or any of the leaders, and then they will organized for you to see me amen yes let's share the grace with one accord the grace of our lord jesus christ and the love of god and the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit be with us now and forevermore amen now i want us to declare psalm 23 psalm 23 from the top from verse one to down one go the lord is my shepherd i shall not want he makes me to lie down in green pastures Leads me, so. He restores my soul. He leads me the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yet though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anoints my head with oil, and my cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Now I dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever amen now before you go joe can you do this the lord bless you yeah now i want to sing this song that's what we do it's our culture before we leave god's presence we sing that song the lord bless you the lord the lord bless you now we're going to personalize and it. keep you now hold on we're going to personalize it. the lord bless me instead of you say the lord bless me and keep me make his face shine upon me be gracious 
the Lord bless you and keep you. Come on. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Can we all sing it together? The Lord bless it. The Lord. much less name I pray amen go in peace please the books are at the back you can get a copy and I will autograph it for you if you want